Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, back, arms, chest, abdomen, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Spontaneous natural breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am aware I am breathing in. I am breathing out and I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for a few moments. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumantya. And at the Brumantya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishtadevata or of a brightly burning candle flame. And if visualization is difficult, you can also imagine a subtle pulsation at the eyebrow center. Whichever the experience you choose, connect deeper with that experience. Make that experience more lifelike. And maintaining this connection, we shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by the Shanti Mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. Oh. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunakto Sahavir Yankar Vavahai Tejasvina Vadita Mastu Maved Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Keeping your eyes closed for a few moments. Bring your awareness back to the eyebrow center. And then gently bring the palms together. Wrap them against each other. Place the palms on the closed eyes. And then when comfortable, gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyom, Tatsat, Namunarayan, Jaipo. So, welcome to the fifth episode of Swadhyay Satra discussion. And today, we shall 
like always begin with sadguru vandana followed by the dhyan mantras for maharshi patanjali and then we shall have a quick recap of what we saw in week 4 and then we move ahead in week 5 so let us begin श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम भव सागर तारण कारण हे रविनंदन बंधन खंडन हे शरणागत किंकर भीत मने गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने हृदय कंदर ताम स्वभास कर हे तुम विष्णु प्रजापति शंकर हे पर ब्रह्म परा पर वेद भणे गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने मन वारण कारण अंकुश हे नरत्राण करे हरि चाक्षुष हे गुण गान परायण देव गणे गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने कुल कुंडली तुम भंजत हे हृदय ग्रंथ विदारण कारण हे महिमा तव गोचर शुद्ध मने गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने अभिमान प्रभाव विमर्द कहे अति दीन जने तुम रक्ष कहे मन कंपित वंचित भक्ति धने गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने त्रिपुसूदन मंगल कहे सुख शांति वरा भय दाय कहे प्रयताप हरे तव नाम गुणे गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने तव नाम सदा सुख साधक हे पति धम मानव पावक हे मम मानस चंचल रात्रि दिने गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने 
जय सुरु ईश्वर प्रापक हे भवरोग विकार विनाशक हे मन लीन रहे तव श्री चरणे गुरुदेव दया कर दीन जने श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 जय जय राम जय जय राम विथ योर आईज क्लोज एक्सपीरियंस द ग्रेस ऑफ गुरु and then we proceed for the dhyan mantras of maharshi pantanjali the compiler of the yog sutras yoge na chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya cha vaidyakena yo pakarottam pravaram muninam पतंजलि प्राजली पातंजल महाभाष्य चरक प्रति संस्कृत मनोवाक्काय दोषाण अंत्रे पत नम ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ and now we shall proceed with the swadhyay satra in this week we shall be understanding the concept of ishwara which maharshi patanjali has propounded in the previous week we had a look at what is the culmination of yoga samadhi we had a brief introduction to that and we also saw how one could achieve that let us have a brief recap we shall chant the sutras once and I have a look, quick look at the meanings vitark vicharananda smitanugamat sampradnyatah virama pratyaya abhyasa purva sanskar shesho nyah bhava pratyayo videha prakruti layanam shraddha virya smruti samadhi pradnya purvak तीव्र संवेगातर्क विचार आनंद अस्मिता अनुगमा संप्रज्ञात समाधि इज अ टाइप ऑफ समाधि वेर इन द एसोसिएशन एग्जिस्ट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रीजनिंग रिफ्लेक्शन ब्लिस एंड सेंस ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिटी एंड 
we use these to be able to transcend the mind. So the concept of that symbol exists within us at that point of time, according to Maharshi Patanjali. Reasoning is regarding the object outside. Reflection is about a thought which is occurring, coming up in the mind. State of bliss is an experience which is subtler to a thought and reflection. And much subtler than that is the sense that I am an individual and I exist. So in Sampratnyat Samadhi, these remain. Although we have transcended the state of mind, but some basis of the external world still remains. Next is the Asampradnyat Samadhi. What does that indicate? Virama Pratyaya Abhyasa Purvaha Sanskara Sheshaha Anyaha. Anyaha is the other one, Asampradnyat Samadhi. This is preceded by Abhyas of the cessation of the content of the mind, that is the Chitta Vritti. Cessation of the Chitta Vritti. Chitta Vritti Nirodha. And in this state, only the faint traces of samskara still remain. So, this is what samadhi is. Of course, this we will understand much later, intellectually, experientially. Um, that's a point yet to be looked at. But this is how we transcend the mind. And then Maharshi explains who can achieve these states. He says, Bhava Pratyayo Videha Prakruti Layana. Bhava Pratyayaha means one, uh, means by birth. Bhava means you have manifested, Pratyaya, symbol. So Bhava Pratyaya means by birth. There are some people who can achieve this and they are the videha people who are in the videha state and whose prakriti laya has taken place very high highly evolved souls who in their past lives have done a lot of tapasya and reached a point and then in this birth they progress from there so therefore since they have already studied till msc now they have straight gone into PhD by birth itself. If we are not able to do that, we are not in that level, does it mean that we have no hope? No, it doesn't. It says, next sutra, that others can achieve this by Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi Pradnya. And that is how we can, others who don't have this state by birth can also reach a Sampradnyat Samadhi by the following. Then Maharshi goes ahead and explains how do we achieve these states. He says, Tivra Samvega Nama Asanaha. To be able to achieve this, one can do so only when there is an intense desire for it. In uh, absence of this, nothing is possible. And he explains that this intense desire can also be categorized into three parts. Mruddu, Madhya and Adhimatra. Mruddu is mild. It, I mean, there, there is complete seriousness and the, the, it is known that yes, that is what I need to achieve. But still, there is a mild intensity. The intensity becomes a little bit more and 
the intensity becomes overwhelming. Nothing else has any significance. Just like the cocaine addict or any addict for that matter, when he goes into a state, he doesn't look at anything else. All he needs is that shot. And till that shot is received, for him, he can do anything. He can even kill. He can do anything you ask him to do. 10 times, 100 times more powerful than that. Paramahans Ramakrishna had once said that there was a person who had asked about having the darshan of the Lord. They were on the river bank. He just dipped the head of that person into the river and hold, uh, held him down. The person started struggling, spluttering. After a minute or so, Paramansji left him and he came out. He came up gasping for breath, shocked that somebody as uh, evolved as uh, Ram Krishna Paramahams could do something shocking like this to him. And he said, what was that? Ram Krishna Paramahams very gently asked, so when you were underwater, were you thinking of the Lord and your desire to achieve the Lord? He said, no, of course not. At that time, I was trying to save my life. And then Ram Krishna Paramahans said, even at that time, if you have only the des desire to meet the Lord, then he will meet you. So that is what is Adhimatra. Nothing else exists. So that is how one needs to progress. Now we shall come to this week. Before we proceed, we need to understand that Samadhi is the culmination of yoga, something which is very difficult for most of us to even comprehend. And therefore, for us, we should rename Samadhi as harnessing the mind, enhancing the creative faculties of the mind. A simple reason being, it's almost impossible that any one of us can reach that state. So we might feel that there is no point in you know studying all of this. This is just theoretical discussion. But no. Maharshi is speaking about the progress which has to be taken. I might decide to go the whole hog, but to go to the final destination, I need to take step one. So I need to achieve a target, then an objective, then the goal, and then the final aim can be reached. The final aim can be Samadhi. But for us, the first objective is harnessing the mind, befriending the mind. How can we do that? So if we just rename Samadhi for our understanding with harnessing the mind or enhancing one's creativity, then it becomes more relevant to us. And even when it becomes relevant to us, it is not easy. Shraddha, Virya, Smruti and Tivra Samvega, Nam, all these things appear very difficult. So what do we do? doesn't seem likely that we can do anything. Understanding and knowing this, Maharshi Patanjali has provided yet another step ahead. Sorry. And that is what we are going to see in this week. We shall chant the sutras of this week two times, look at the meanings and then have a discussion on that. Let us begin. Ishwara Pranidhana Dva Klesha Karma Vipakasha Yaira Paramrushta Purusha Vishesha Ishwaraha Tatra Niratishayam Sarvadnya Bijam 
सूर्वी गुर काले ईश्वर क्लेश कर्म विपाक पुरुष विशेष ईश्वर तरअतिशय सार्वज्ञ बीज स गुरुः कालेन अस्य वाचकः प्रणवः नाउ लेट अस लुक एट द मीनिंग्स ऑफ ईच सूत्र ईश्वर प्रणिधाना वा सो so, he spoke about sampradnyat samadhi asampradnyat samadhi he spoke about different people who qualify to reach samadhi and he has shown the first step how we could achieve samadhi knowing that it is difficult <clears throat> he explains further that if the above is difficult then we can also achieve असंप्रज्ञात समाधि बाय डिवोशन टू द लॉर्ड प्रणिधान कैन बी अंडरस्टूड सिंपलिस्टिकली एज डिवोशन एंड डिवोशन टू होम टू ईश्वरा यू सी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ईश्वरा हैज कम इन द योग सूत्रास एंड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज वेरी स्पेसिफिक यू विल स्पीक अबाउट इट लेटर दिस कॉन्सेप्ट we will discuss a bit more when we discuss at the moment we can just understand that there is something which regulates and oversees everything that is known as ishwara so by devotion unflinching one pointed devotion to ishwara also we can achieve that in the next sutra maharshi explains what he means by ishwara in a way he defines ishwara klesha karma vipak aashayaihi aparamrushtah purusha vishesha ishwara klesha means painful conflicts that which create agitations that which disturb the uh, quiet nature of the lake which is known as the mind vikarma vipak whenever we do an action there is a resultant of that action the results of the karma ashayehi reservoir of the impressions of all the past actions i have eaten rasgulla in the past and that memory is in my mind that is the memory which has which is there in impression form and this memory has an impact on our behavior so that is the third fourth is aparamrushtah beyond purusha vishesha a special entity purusha does not mean male or female purusha means purishyate iti purusha one who resides in the gated complex our body is considered to be a gated complex a city one who resides in the city is purusha vishesha so the jivatma but He is a very very special jivatma who has all these above qualities, who is beyond and also unaffected by the painful conflicts, the results of the actions, and also of the free of the impressions of all past actions. Such a 
entity is known as Ishwara. He has defined it very clearly. In the next sutra, he explains it further. Tatra nirashikti shayam sarvadnya bijam. Tatra, in it. Nirati shayam, beyond all limits of comprehension. Sarvadnya bijam. Sarvadnya. Sarvadnya means who is knowing everything. Bijam. Where there is that seed of omniscience. So, this sutra means in it, in this entity known as Ishvara, rests the seed of all encompassing and all pervading knowledge. Beyond, which is beyond all limits of comprehension. Something which our minds will not even be able to comprehend. That is Ishvara. So he explains further in the next sutra. Sa esha purveshamapi guruhu kalena anavacheta. Another attribute of Ishvara. Saha eshaha he about this purveshamapi means amongst those who ever existed earlier also. Guruhu. Guru means greater, larger, bigger. And Guru also means a master. Kalena anavacheta. Kalena means by time. Anavacheta means it is not covered away. It is not obliterated or eclipsed by time. Ashoka was a great king. Yeah. But he died and slowly and slowly his glory also faded away. We remember, oh yes, Ashoka was a great king. That's all. So, we fade away. There might be so many Ashokas in the antiquities of time whom we have totally forgotten. There might be so many great people who are forgotten. But this entity Ishwara is not covered away by time or cannot be eclipsed by time also. So, this entity is greater amongst all those accomplished beings who ever existed. And as such, this entity is the guru, the master of all the masters who ever existed. And he is eternal, never eclipsed by time, nor can it be obliterated by time. That is what Ishwara is. Now that he has explained Ishwara, who is beyond all comprehension, beyond everything, beyond everything, how is it that we can actually even some understand something which is beyond comprehension? In one hand, it is he is saying that he is beyond comprehension. And on the other hand, he is saying that you can achieve asampratnya samadhi by devotion to Ishwara. So, I mean, if I cannot even comprehend something, how can I have devotion to that? There he gives another point. Tasya vachakaha pranavaha. Tasya, it's vachaka, symbol or representative. Pranavaha, Om. Om is the representative. Om is the symbol. Om is the ambassador for Ishwara. That is something which we can relate to. So, in this week, we have something which is very powerful and something which we can do. Shraddha, Virya, Smruti. Concepts are good. But will we be able to do it? Very difficult. Ivra Samvega Nama Asanaha. Again, not easy. Mruddu Madhyadi Matratva. I mean, even when all the conditions are favorable, my mind does not even go to Ishwara does not go to even the state of samadhi and the sadhana and all that which has to be done. My mind keeps on running. Oh, it is too hot. It is too cold. He said this. She said this. Why did I not do that? I am all 
engaged in this play of the mind. So, I mean, yoga is great, fun. It can do that, but it's not for me. You know, it's something which is way beyond me. This week, Maharshi Patanjali gives us a lifeline. And he begins by explaining about it, calling it Ishwara Pranitha. All of us have a concept of Ishwara. And if we are asked what Ishwara means, everybody might speak differently about it. If we ask people about gravity, everybody will say exactly the same thing about gravity. It is defined clearly. But Ishwara is very subjective. Ishwara is very less understood. And perhaps that is why Maharshi Patanjali makes an effort to define Ishwara. And when we begin, we think that, okay, Ishwara is person who is beyond kleshas. When we have the vrittis and our awareness is based, oriented towards the sense objects, then the vrittis create changes in the mind, in the perception, in the cognition, and they cause agitations. Only when we go beyond the mind, transcend the mind, and stay fixed in that state, that these vrittis don't cause agitation. Then they become, from klishta, they become a klishta. So these are the kleshas. And in the second chapter, we will be discussing more about it. He has defined, Maharshi has defined that also. But that is a bit it. We also know what klesha is. Something which is painful, something which creates hardships. So this Ishwara is beyond kleshas. He has no agitation. He has no conflicts. He is beyond the effects of the actions. If I withdraw 100 rupees, uh, if I take a loan of 100 rupees from the bank, no matter what I try to do, where I try to run, I have to pay that loan back. Otherwise, the bank is going to send its recovery team and recover it from me. In the same manner, in the karmic level, any action which we do, sooner or later, we have to face the consequences of that action. But there is this person who is beyond the actions and the results of the actions also. He is also beyond the impressions, the memories, the associations. They don't trouble this entity. He is beyond all of that. And then he goes on to explain the different aspects of Ishvara. In the Bhagavad Gita, Maharshi Pat um, Bhagavan Shri Krishna has spoken a similar concept. And he has said, Sutre Mani Gana Eva. He says that I am in this world, but I am not in this world too. In the same way as in this mala, there are the beads. His beads make up the mala. But they are not sufficient. The beads are individuals. There is a single thread which runs through them. That thread is a part of the bead because when the bead is pierced, the thread goes through it. So that thread is within the bead, but it is beyond the bead also. It runs across. That is the concept of Ishwara. He is 
within us also and he is beyond us also. When we exist in the first dimension, then we exist in the second dimension, then we exist in the third dimension. But here is a person which ex who exists in a much higher dimension also. If I am in the first dimension, then I have only a line, length. In the second dimension, we also have length and breadth. Second dimension is not only breadth. It is length plus breadth. So length exists in the higher dimension, but breadth does not exist in the lower dimension. Height exists in the third dimension, but height does not exist in the second dimension. And they say that time is the fourth dimension. So time exists in the fourth dimension, but time does not exist in the third dimension. And this way, there is something which is beyond all these dimensions. It can exist in all the lower dimensions, but for us to reach that dimension is not possible. So such a person who is transcendental and present everywhere to both the things. That is Ishwara. And Ishwara is not a form. Ishwara is a phenomenon, an entity. But such an entity is very difficult to comprehend. <laughs> he has even said that he is beyond comprehension. So if a person is beyond comprehension, then how do we even connect to that entity. That is what Maharshi has concluded in this. That is where we have concluded in this week with Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha. Om Pranav is the representative. I cannot comprehend that supra dimensional entity which is beyond karmas, which is beyond karma vipaka, which is beyond karma ashaya, ashaya. He is beyond everything. How can I comprehend that? Not possible for me. I start scratching my head. Not possible. Samaj mein nahi aara hai. That is where he says, don't worry. Even if you are not able to comprehend all of that, if you click one point, oh, and try to become aware of that, try to experience that, that is the port by which you can reach Ishwara. Om is that port in our dimension through which we can reach that higher dimension. So, this is now how he is showing us Yoga is a way of harnessing the mind for our purposes. And to harness the mind, there are multiple ways. One of the ways which I feel is the easiest way, especially in today's times, when our minds are so um, unsteady, is Ishwara Pranidhan. We will speak about it later also. But this, this is the concept which I feel is very crucial for all of us. So, with this we can conclude today. And if you have any doubts, anything which is not clear, please do ask. I have kept 12 minutes specifically for that. So Swamiji, essentially we are saying that if we do the Om chanting, uh, we uh, will find a way to reach Ishvara. Is that what it means? Yes. In essence, yes. 
but just om chanting uh, you know is not uh, the end of it if we begin with om chanting and when we start doing om chanting then all those effects which he has said and he is going to explain ahead again they will start following you see as i have explained earlier you have a solution full of alum it is a saturated solution of alum and still you will see that the alum does not start crystallizing for crystallizing of alum in a saturated solution also you need a seed and that seed the moment you put in a string the alum starts crystallizing on that string instead of a string if you put a star or if you put a round or if you put different shapes the alum starts crystallizing as per that shape in the same manner this pratyaya symbol representative om is that trigger catalyst on which the mind starts coming together starts crystallizing and when the mind gets stuck to that then the next process begins so we can say that om is for us for our level of comprehension of om om is that beginning of the pore where in we begin the journey and the end of the journey is ishwar So, what is the next chapter? What are the next chapters, Swami Ji? Is it about Om and more about uh, how do we do that? Yeah, we will. We, he, he, you see, Maharshi Patanjali goes in a very systematic manner, and we will be discussing about these and related aspects during the coming week because this is a. practical science this is not a theoretical science and he over this 200 sutras 196 to be precise uh, he gives different means different methods to achieve that ultimate goal of yoga and he explains all the aspects of it so it is not a linear thing that okay we start doing and then we have reached we have to first understand also once we start understanding we start imbibing it starts becoming clearer to us so swadhyay is meant for that shravan listening to manan pondering upon nididhyasan starting to assimilate and integrate that so please sit comfortably in any meditative posture hands on your knees head neck shoulders back all in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed for a few moments let the mind pop dwell upon ponder upon the points we have spoken of today what do they mean to me not just an intellectual explanation but something which i can relate to i can understand in my perspective for a few moments let the mind dwell upon that If your mind goes in different directions, gently disengage it from there and bring it back to the topic we had discussed.
let those thoughts sink in so that you can ponder over them during this week come up with some queries some insights some understandings relate to these sutras deeper and make a change in our lives with this thought and concept we shall conclude bring your awareness back to the eyebrow center establish the same image you had chosen in the beginning of the session establish that install that on the eyebrow center once again and maintaining your awareness of this experience at the eyebrow center we shall chant the mantra om three times followed by the shanti part taking in a deep breath om om Asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotir gamaya mrityor ma amritam gamaya sarvesham swasti bhavatu sarvesham shantir bhavatu sarvesham purnam bhavatu मंगल लोकासमस्ता सुखिनो त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता shanti 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 and sing pranam mudra tvameva mata cha pita tvameva tvameva bandhascha sakha tvameva tvameva vidya dravinam tvameva tvameva sarvam मम देव देव तमेव सर्व मम देव देव तमेव सर्व मम देव देव हरि ओ हरि ओम तत्सत जेंटली रब द पांच अगेंस्ट ईच अदर जनरेट सम फॉर्म प्लेस द पांच ऑन द क्लोज्ड आईज experience the warmth radiating from the palms to the eyes relaxing the eyes relaxing the brain relaxing the whole body and then gently move the palms away open your eyes riyom sat on the eye 